Hello everybody, uh, Happy New Year guys. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I haven't been here a while so apparently forgot how to sp or talk to the camera and speak English. Today is not going to be a tutorial, it is going to be an interview. Character artist is a Donald fan uh, at Blizzard working on a world watch. So this is way early in the morning so I kind of forgot everything. And and I think he's working on Overwatch 2 so we are going to talk about the process of like making a character or a 3D model for a video game so if you're interested in becoming an artist in the video game industry uh, and um, want to know like how to get in there or what kind of stuff are they looking for in the portfolio then yeah um, you should watch this video um, all right. So, what happened to you? Like, what what's going on in since then? Since all right, so what, I I left Green at what two thousand twelve, I think, and then I sort of went to do some freelance. I did some uh, mm -hmm. art classes, you know, drawing, painting, kind of kind of thing. Oh, cool! And then. And then Hi got a job down in Blizzard, and he's like, "Hey, you want to move to California?" <laughs> I was like, well, it's a free move, I guess, since uh, his relocation costs would cover my moving down too. So I, I joined him. Yeah. Uh, I was freelancing a little bit more, and then I did some. Then I started freelancing for his team, the Overwatch uh, team at Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've been involved with them like off and on since I guess like 2014. Yeah. Holy cow, uh, like what, ten, five years, five, six years, basically? Yeah, uh, a lot of it was remote, like, you know, just like regular freelance. I was there for a little bit on site. Um, now I am doing more, uh -huh. I don't even know what to call it, like, it's like my title. It's, <laughs> I just do 3D stuff, right? Super, like, three, I, super I don't know 3D I, modeler guy? Yeah, I don't know if I, I am technically a character artist. I don't know what I am. Um, <laughs> I just help them out. You, you know, do, okay. Do everything. If props need to be made, uh, I'll do. I work in props. If some character stuff needs to get done, then I'll just do that. Oh, so yeah, I just, yeah. I just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so uh, I need to introduce you first. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> so this is Donald Fan. Um, here's is what you see in the screen. You probably don't see. Um, I have the other win window tab open. So when it's recorded, it got your art station page on. Um. Okay. So um, he's been working with uh, me at ArenaNet for a long time. So we did work together for probably like five years, six years, maybe. Um, and then he just moving on to do some um, character stuff. For you did some stuff for Dota too, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. for Dota stuff, and then um, now he's on the Overwatch team um, at Blizzard. And he's doing mm -hmm. pretty much everything and taking care of all these 3D character and what do you call those skin also and, and yeah. everything like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I character wise, I mostly work on skins mm -hmm. and I've done some prop stuff too. Um, and, but mm -hmm. yeah, so I also help out with the outsourcing. So maybe that's like preparing something for them to send out to another oh. freelancer. Like, kind of stuff. like the alpha test for Overwatch 2 and stuff like that too? Um, No, no, no. It's more like, you know, we have a ton of skins and we can't do it internally. So mm -hmm. we have our, like a very small group of artists that we work with uh, pretty oh. regularly. To get oh, okay. the, basically, yeah, outsourcing, but with yeah, yeah. just a small scale. Smaller scale on it. Okay. Yeah. So most most of them are like internal, like I mean, uh, in the states or any particular location, or how do you find them? Over overseas, I'm not sure. Um, like a lot of that pipeline was established before me. Oh, I see. So, um, so you know, we work with Airborne a lot. Mm -hmm. They're up in Germany, oh. um, and then Rapcat, which I think is also Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. Uh. A few other like smaller studios and a, a few other individual artists as well. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I have like a tons of questions for you, like especially for the kids that I work with, and mm. because they are a big fan of you and high, 
and apparently oh. people here kind of know you guys too so i was like wow that's crazy okay. yeah that's crazy because you know, in I, the internet you know the internet and the art station thing and yeah you guys are like hot shot especially if you guys uh, like doing blizzard things and i think i think a lot of people know you guys from and especially like hi has tutorial did you do tutorial too or no um no i i taught a little bit though like oh, okay. uh, at an art school but no like recorded no tutorials recorded. that kind of thing i see yeah but yeah hi's the famous one i'm the one who like disappears <laughs> all the time you're just <laughs> hiding um, but now you can't hide anymore now you're on you're on youtube in the channel so oh. translate them a little bit so okay um he wants to know what is your like what's your workflow these days like what to what kind of tool do you use to to make your amazing art station here um you mean and, personal work or like uh, professional like i i think uh, yeah you can you can and you can split that into two answer i think if you have your own preference kind of way to work for your personal stuff and yeah. if you are in the pipeline for whatever um like say blizzard pipeline uh, how how do you do it over there and how do you prefer it if you were doing to some like high-end model because i see like some uh, this character over here the god fry or whatever how what is your process or whatever kind of style that you prefer to work with so basically um what kind of program to use and, and how do you manage your workflow like what kind of percentage in the um say uh in the low poly high poly and then what uh how many percentage when you're doing the, the map or uv stuff like that all right go uh, all right so i guess i'll start with the work stuff because i assume most people are interested in like work? the overwatch stuff. I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about that. Um, oh, honestly, it's it's not like we do anything super top secret, to be mm -hmm. honest. But I yeah. don't know. Like, I'll I'll try to keep it broad. Um, yeah, yeah, just keep it broad. Yeah, but any proprietary um, stuff, it's fine. We don't need to. Yeah, but you use yeah. like typical stuff, right? The program, just like Maya. Yeah, typical. Well, Maya, uh, ZBrush, Photoshop. Um, no Marmoset. Marmoset, yeah. No no? yeah. Really? No substance. Yeah. We oh. do it the old fashioned way, man. What? <laughs> Seriously? No, we have some tools that make it easier. Oh, for so sure. Prior to yeah. Or something. Okay. Yeah, there, there's some like custom things that we do, yeah. um, which makes it a little harder to talk about because like everyone yeah, yeah. they use uh, substance. That's what I was. Um, when you said that, like, you know, there's might be some stuff that I can't talk about. It's like a secret. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but like, aside from that, um, you know, I think Overwatch is known for really clean yeah. models. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of hard surface modeling too. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of the character stuff, you'd be surprised at what we hard surface and what we ZBrush. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I think some of the guys on the team, they do strictly hard surface modeling for everything. Wow. Yeah. Holy cow. So, yeah, I, I can't do that, but <laughs> <laughs> that's hardcore, man. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll have to like start sculpting in ZBrush, and then not like be top on on top yeah. of it just to get it like super clean because I, I can't always get the what I need out of the ZBrush um, the way that we we like to do it. Um, but yeah, the you know we use proprietary stuff like mm -hmm. or proprietary engine, right? So there's not a whole lot I can talk about that. Um, like, man, I don't even know if I can talk about like the task time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay what, about your, what about your personal stuff? If, if it's, uh, if it's easier. Yeah. How, how do you, yeah, like, okay, do your personal, personal stuff? Um, do you still use X normal, by the I way? Do hmm? <laughs> you still use X normal? No. <laughs> I think some people still use it. I was like, what the? Yeah, I, I think. X normal okay. is great back then, but now I, I don't use it as I don't use it at all. Um, if I'm gonna bake something, I'm gonna bake it in Marmoset. Oh, Marmoset, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, and so for my personal stuff, it's kind of lazy. Um, 
I go, I'll do a lot of, I'll try and do everything I can in ZBrush. Uh -huh. So I've done, I, the more I use ZBrush, the more I use like ZModeler to kind of get the hard surface stuff going. And um, I don't do like a proper retopple. I just will do a Z remesher, project, subdivide, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, I'll do my UVs because I'm, I'm usually, when I'm working on my own, I don't really want to think about all like the technical things that, you know, when you do the oh, final okay. low play game model. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I want to keep it sort of like a more like an illustration. So I cut corners everywhere. Yeah. My UVs suck, <laughs> but that's okay. Cause I'm using like super huge texture sizes. Um, personally, I'll use Substance Painter, mm -hmm. and then I'll do a lot of rendering inside of Marmor sets. Mm -hmm. uh, I am planning on switching to Blender at some point, but you are? I just haven't. Yeah. No, seriously. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's talking about that. How like how big is this thing right now? The Blender thing. Um, Blender is improving way more every year than Maya has. Yes. Uh, I mean, Maya has been Yeah. And also, yeah, like, my I, I heard Ubisoft is investing in uh, Blender and so does um, Epic, right? Yeah. Does Blizzard, like, involve in anything with that at all? I don't think so, no. Oh, okay. Because if, if Activision Blizzard was kind of, you know, part of investing in, I think like a lot of things would change from, because Autodesk has been like dominating this industry forever and they, they're, not, yeah. they're not doing shit with a lot of things. I mean, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I feel like sometimes they just make the programs worse too. So. <laughs> True. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm kind of tired of that, man, <laughs> personally. Yeah, so that, I want to switch to Blender. Um, well, you heard Facebook is now uh, contributing to to Blender now, too. Oh, uh, yeah, some, somewhat, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. mm, what else is there? Yeah, before I wanted to switch to Blender, I was rendering a lot in Arnold. Oh, um, OK. Yeah, yeah. But Maya bought. I mean, Autodesk bought it. Yeah, yeah. So and it comes with, it comes with Maya, so it's convenient. But I feel like if I'm going to do more of that kind of pre render stuff, then I think I'm going to try and shift away completely from Maya. Oh yeah, because I I yeah. seen a lot of like people doing a lot of pretty cool stuff with Blender too. Like not only in the three D realm, but like a lot of two D concept artists nowadays they're doing like you know. The, the shot with um, Blender and do the pre-visualization or whatever the layout thing, animation. Yeah, there's a lot of them too. Yeah. 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 Cool. That's that's good stuff. Yeah. So are you mm -hmm. like, stay at Blizzard forever? Like any plan? Oh, like, forever. Um, what was your secret project that you're working on? My secret projects. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I don't know. Like. I honestly haven't done much personal art recently. Uh -huh. I've seen a few uh, on, in the art station, so like uh, at least like a couple of those cute, you know, sort of like a little more cartoony than Blizzard, stylized. Yeah. Female face. Yeah, you know, I have a few more of those that I want to work on. I just haven't started. I like see. right now, honestly, I'm archiving a lot of like old drawings and paintings that I, I did. Mm -hmm. Just so I can just throw it away because I'm tired of like every time I move, I gotta carry like all this paper and crap. So it's just it got too much. <laughs> too you much ties money. it, yeah. Then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. And then when somebody uh, find your stuff in the garage someday, they'll be like, "Oh, yeah, that's total fun. You can sell this thing for like hundreds of thousands or something." Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Unlikely. Yeah. You, Unlikely. you never know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also. Okay, so another question. Um, okay, uh, how this I have to translate this. So, how do you view the future of a three D character artist in terms of um, 
what would would it has any disruption in terms of like would there be any changes in the workflow or uh, would there um, like what would be the new norm for the character artists? I, I would I that's what I would kind of translate. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Um, like, it changes all the time. So yeah. I would hope the new norm would be like some sort of automatic retoffle so that we don't have to do it manually. <laughs> that's what everyone's switching. Yeah, I know. I know that's that's not very original because everyone wants that. But no, but like, how would how would they do the join and all that kind of stuff? Though you think there would be like smart AI doing it? The... Yeah, I mean, I would hope that you'd be able to select a region and kind of show and like maybe there's like a drop down. Like it's like okay, this is like a hinge joint or whatever. And then it'll oh yeah, no, yeah. It'll try and and do a smart job about that. Um, but honestly, I think realistically, I mean, I feel like that's the way ahead into the future, but maybe more realistically now just be sort of more advanced automation along say smart materials, you know, like in painter, mm -hmm. um, uh, just see what, what is that? Or like, just like automating texture generation or, um, so like, you know, like you can drag and drop like a material and painter or something. It'll go through a bunch of presets that you already created just so you can get the same look. Oh, um, okay. Probably be a little bit more along those lines of how do we texture, not just one thing, but several things at the same time. Um, and how do you update all those, that, all those textures? Like say you just have like a master uh, shader that then you can, hmm. anything that's to that shader can be re-exported so you this all has like the very same consistent values mm -hmm. um let's see mm, i think there's going to be more integration of scan data you know like the all the mega scan stuff um oh oh kind of like the uh, unreal with the quixel and all that kind of thing with the mega scan you hope you were <laughs> hoping that it will be like part of the character too yeah, I think so. I think I think it's just going to be more automation. Mm -hmm. uh, is it the same kind of automation that we want? I'm not sure, because I think it's a lot easier to do that with the realistic stuff. But for stylized work, it gets a little bit harder. Yeah, you know, you absolutely still need, true. That that's like the, the the artist input would be more like would be pretty crucial for the people who wants to do stylized stuff. That's mean from the process in the beginning, from the concept down to the modeling stuff you can do a lot of automation and you were doing overwatch in comparison to yeah. the realistic stuff that's what you said right yeah um i mean i know substance is always trying to oh here's our new stylized painter shader or whatever and it, yeah. it never quite quite works out but i think we'll someday. get it eventually yeah someday. eventually <laughs> eventually robot would take over yeah yeah and then we had no jobs so <laughs> yep we have stuff to do, clean up after robots. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so what else here? Um, oh, there's, an, there's one that said, which step did you hate most? I would say retopology. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's yep. what you do not like the most, retopology? No, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's funny. All right. So, um, okay. This one, probably a good one. Um, he wants to know how, like, what would be your ideal, uh, sort of style that you want to work towards or mm. like, is there any specific, um, style in terms of like maybe the artist, uh, works or the games? or the whatever that you want to kind of um yeah what what are you interested in other than oh i think of course yeah in doing i like think that of, changed a lot for me mm -hmm. because i just like a lot of different things yeah that's so i don't difficult part <laughs> yeah i don't yeah i'm not really 
like in love with it, like one thing or one artist only. I mm -hmm. I feel like I just like too many things, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty interested in exploring those on my own. You know, because I I still want to do like a more like super realistic mm -hmm. character or something like that. It's hard to find the time to do it, but I'm interested in doing it. Um, mm, and I think that sort of reflects in a lot of the like personal art I do is, you know, I feel like a lot of people from reading that we just, we like to do figure drawing. We like to do that kind of stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah. True. So, you know, like yeah. that's what I really enjoy too. And it has yeah. nothing to do with making character art. Yeah. Um, it's like it, but it's so different, but I'm so really interested in you know, I'll take the time to learn it and I'll take the time to, you know, just get better at it. Um, but if I were to say, uh, right now, if I, if I'm leaning towards a specific direction, it'll probably yeah. be more along like the feature animation, like Disney, Oh, okay. that kind of animation. Yeah. Cool. So it will be like, for now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So it's more like, um, feature film you said possibly. Yeah. Yeah, because I think what's really cool about the feature films is that they really push shape, yeah. like shape design a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some some characters are like a ball, right? Or they're like a box, yeah, a box yeah. with a ball on top or something. And then, you know, th I think that's really interesting to to be able to break down mm -hmm. art like that in mm -hmm. the, that kind of graphic read. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. We even talked to Bobby. I was like, hey, Bobby. Bobby is his, I think he's taking care of like some, I'm not sure. I think he's on Disney Channel now. He's not on a feature film now, but mm -hmm. he's taking care of a lot of projects. Yeah. I haven't talked to him in a while, but yeah, last I interviewed him was like two years ago, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He got, he got Oscar for Frozen. Yeah. So, that's crazy, man. Oh, like, he's holy shit. Big shot. <laughs> big shot now. Yeah. Hanging out with Kanye West and all that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him though. Uh, yeah, I miss the, whole, the, the good old times. Um, all right, so now uh, there's another question. Oh, this is from the junior artist in my company. Um, how do you become you? <laughs> like, how to become like you? Like, how do you train yourself from not so good to become really really good so basically how to become like donald fan i so i would say first you should aim a little higher you know aim, a little <laughs> <higher>. <laughs> aim, aim higher than me um don't be like me no uh okay. let's see um well i guess this sort of goes into either entry level advice or like student advice sometimes because right? like, i think we all get sort of the same questions like you know how do you how do you become good or whatever um i think the the easiest answer or the most obvious answer is you sort of have to constantly compare yourself to the top mm -hmm. and anything less than that isn't good enough yeah so like it's, it's not about like oh, am I as good as my classmate or am I as good as my immediate sort of uh, colleague? Like you always have to compare it to like the best people, right? So like on our station or whatever, like it's, you have to aim for like that front page all the time. Hmm. Uh, I think that's like the, the most obvious answer, but I don't think that's the most practical answer. <laughs> so I think um, the more practical answer is and this goes for like every student right is you have to pick something to get good at mm. because i think the one of the biggest problems is uh most people who ask me for advice they don't mm. exactly know where they want to go mm -hmm. and i think the the critical thing is you have to pick something right mm -hmm. so if it's like character art is environment art that kind of thing uh some of these the problem is like some of these fields are either more difficult to mm -hmm. enter, like character art or concept art, you know, those are really tough competitive fields. So if you don't have um, people around you to support you, like if your mm -hmm. family is not 
supporting you mm -hmm. if you don't have like the financial means then it's not good to chase after that mm -hmm. right away mm -hmm. right i think it's it's you have to sort of build a, a longer game plan of so this is the end goal right and what can take me there so it could be all right so if i want to do 3d character art then don't just immediately start doing you know super elaborate characters, you know, you want to start small. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in, when you start small, it's a little bit easier to succeed. Mm -hmm. And when you succeed, that gives you more motivation to keep going, mm -hmm. right? Like if you build up from doing a bunch of props, mm -hmm. uh, that's always good. As opposed to like, I've never done 3D at all. I'm going to make a character. <laughs> I think that's going to be yeah. the most frustrating thing, you know, for you to yeah. do. So you might start um, with a hat. <laughs> and then yeah going up yeah like or like do a gauntlet right do a gauntlet. you know you don't have to do the entire body or entire outfit mm -hmm. the a gauntlet you know you can still practice the same sort of ideas topology that kind of thing um you know like kind of work your way up yeah um pretty good idea mm -hmm. but yeah um other than that it's it's a lot of persistence right i think we all have to be really stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's a lot of grit and persistence. It's a lot of like, I'm not, I'm just going to get there no matter what. Yeah. Uh, things like yeah. that. Like, I don't think it matters how long it takes you to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you get there. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, That's if true. someone gets there faster than you, that doesn't matter. It's, yeah. It's that them, right? That's not you. Like just, just keep doing what you want to do and yeah. you'll get there eventually. Yeah. Do whatever that made you happy every day. I think that's, that's good also. Yeah. So, um, but then like, how do you improve in terms of like, what kind of resource do you do to, to get better at things? Like mm -hmm. what, what is your routine? Okay. All right, cool. Um, I, okay. Yeah. I think I, I get the, the direction we're going in. Like for me, for me, I think I spend a lot of time not doing stuff that I show mm -hmm. very obviously. Like, mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time doing drawing studies. Mm -hmm. I do, um, I don't know it sounds cliche, but I think all art sort of feeds into each other. Yeah, so it's not a waste of time to learn how to draw. Yeah. You know, it's not a waste of time to learn how to paint. Um, you just kind of right yeah yeah so for me my okay my personal road has been uh spending as much time as i can like looking at things mm -hmm. outside of the context of the computer right mm -hmm. um and being open to oh, oh there's uh, some people join there's uh, some kid from my company okay <laughs> yeah cool <laughs> yeah um yeah so i i i just when i'm drawing something you know figure drawing mm -hmm. um i'm not just trying to do the same thing over and over like i'm pretty open to like looking at different schools of thought mm -hmm. right so like you've got the, the riley method right you have the academic atelier method and um you know i'll go and sort, sort of break down how they do things mm -hmm. uh, even if I'm not interested in the final result, mm -hmm. I'm just more interested in like, how can I look at something differently? Right? Yeah. So that, I, you know, like when I look at whatever I'm trying to make, mm -hmm. you know, professionally, then I have a bet, I have more tools, right? To be able to break it down, um, be able to see what's more appealing. Like if I push this shape this way, mm -hmm. um, versus that way, like, what does that give me, right? So like, those are very abstract, but it's hard to get there without doing a lot of just art in general, I think. Okay, so kind of like experimenting and reverse engineering and, and all that kind of stuff and look at things from different yeah. angles. Sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a very, I think, unglamorous way of working because mm -hmm. like when you're doing that, like the actual result isn't really good right like you you probably won't be very proud to show it to um someone on facebook or on art station but, I but that's not the point lot, yeah 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 it's about learning right and i think i spend more time trying to learn i think than i am trying to like 
hey, here's a new portfolio piece. So you you were saying like, don't be afraid to push the boundary, even though the result might be bad. Yeah. Kind of thing. Fail, right? Uh, failure is is good because it's good. You, you should learn from that. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people were trying to like they have a different perception of, say, you know, when they look at your stuff, they probably think, oh, how the hell did you do so good? Like, and and they don't see like how, what's behind that curtain or what's yeah. behind that, you know? So right. um, they probably think you just kind of like oh, every piece he does just like that, and just he just you know, magically created. Uh, yeah, that's not it, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you pull up any, um, you know, well-known established artist, and you you don't see the amount of work that they put into it. You just see like, oh, like Sparth, right? Sparth is always like, yeah. here's 20 minutes. And you're like, what? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but that took hundreds of hours, thousands of hours to get to that 20 minute. <laughs> it's accumulated level. a lot of like, um shape in his head that he can just like recall it every time he wants and all that mm -hmm. you know um muscle memories and all this oh, man spark crazy Whew. yeah yeah um and oh that's a uh, more question um hi mod hi hi <laughs> hi i don't know hey Do you have any question uh I have already write you questions in the yeah, line yeah, yeah. application. Yeah, I um, didn't have any questions more. The, I, I already asked one, uh, the, I already asked the one with the workflow and I already asked the one with the um, style of the art. And what does he hate the most is the topology. And <laughs> oh, I haven't asked number five that you sent me. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So when were you looking? When you look at um, saying, if you were going to hire the artist, or if you were going to hire um, the outsourcing company, what do you look for um, the most in, like, in terms of like what what are you looking specifically for um, for the 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 person or a group of people that you want to hire or the yeah and where do you usually go like do you go to art station do you go to linkedin or how how did you how do you find those guys or did you just kind of apply um all right so i don't use linkedin for that mm -hmm. because for for a brief amount of time i had my title on, on linkedin as elsewhere supervisor because that's right. technically my title, right? Yeah. That's technically my title, right? But that's not a good yeah. idea, I don't think. Yeah. I got spammed so hard <laughs> with every <laughs> studio, right? So because yeah. you with LinkedIn, the Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> um, art station for sure. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's like the best example because I can uh, immediately see the result, and no one's chasing me, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. Um, but. I think the first question is, can this group of artists or can this artist work in this style, mm, right? Yeah. I think that's, that's kind of unfair because I think a lot of people are able to work in a lot of different styles. It, you just give them amount of, like X amount of time and they can get it, right? Mm -hmm. But usually we don't have that amount of time to give. So we need to know right away, hey, can they work in the style? Um, so then after that, it would be um, sort of being really nitpicky mm -hmm. and say like, oh, is this a clean model? Like, is it modeled well? Mm -hmm. And which is different, I think, than does this model, does, does this image look good? Mm -hmm. Because something can be good, look, can look good, but it may not be the, the best, right? Yeah. I guess, yeah, like a, like a digital illustration, same thing, right? Oh, this looks really cool, but then when you zoom in, it's like, oh wait, there's like a lot of flaws, right? Their perspective is off, or that kind of thing. So for us, we we're pretty technical. We had to like analyze it on that level. Hmm. Mm. That you can kind of throw, like, like example of like, okay, uh, what you specifically looking for? Like, okay, if it if it looks good, but then what are you looking for when it's kind of like, oh, is it clean or is it not clean? Is 
is it in terms of UV or is it in terms of texture? Oh, or? like for instance, let's say like a real like a like I I got this little uh, jacket thing on, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's got this little trim on the side, and it's got buttons mm -hmm. coming off of it, right? Uh, are all the buttons actually lined up correctly? Ah, You'd be surprised. Like, mm, maybe yeah, it's yeah. like a little bit off. Or maybe it's like a, um, maybe you're doing like a sci-fi suit and mm -hmm. it's got a latch. Like it's mm -hmm. got like two, like uh, this is like a groove and then you're trying to fit this thing in. I think surprisingly, a lot of people, like it may not be 100% lined up. Yeah. But you don't notice that. And as a whole, it, it still looks cool, looks good. But like when you see that like those little things are not aligned, then you're like, well, uh, are they, <laughs> it's not are, you know, are they needed enough, right? Yeah, yeah. Because um, like with your job or any art director, they would kind of looking for that specific um, direction or kind of like how professional can you make it look basically, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe like the last thing is um, like wireframes mm. because it's surprisingly easy or uh, I just, just like a trend I've noticed is that schools aren't, haven't been very good about teaching. I, I think um, I forgot how to teach like low poly model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, and sometimes I'm surprised, right? Like, I'll, I'll, even like I'm working with students still, and I'll, I'll get like a, I'll see it, and I'm like, wait a minute, what's what <laughs> happened? Um, you know what a what an artist decides to keep as a separate object, mm -hmm. and what to kind of keep as a solid object. Mm -hmm. Like that's actually a really important skill that, unfortunately, isn't really being taught. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to kind of evaluate that too, like it, and we because we don't want to train people Artists to do have, that. Yeah, mm. so yeah. So it's have it's kind of like related with the optimization thing too, right? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it I know it's like super annoying because like I'm annoyed too when I work on it. But like when I'm doing it for myself, I'm like, oh man, this is annoying, right? But <laughs> <laughs> we must be done. Get, get, get results. <laughs> I see. Yeah all those things that you have to do with the um, model. Read apology is another thing. Like, uh, the, the better you are at that, I think the, the, the more um, the more chance you get hired, basically. In, yeah. In, especially in games. UVs. Yeah, yeah UVs too. Like, uh, UVs for games is different from UVs for film. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people learn from, like, kind of a more film yeah. approach yeah and maybe you have like ten thousand textures oh, right God. yeah and so like everything's like unoptimized and like <laughs> um, we can't do that <laughs> yeah, okay uh yeah this is another question too so what do you think like what do you think the future of gaming would be like what you you see anything like in ar vr and how is like you you see um unreal 5 right so mm -hmm. I fuck that's but um, <laughs> they're not they they're not able to do that with the character yet. So right. what do you think? Um, what what would you envision in your uh, dream world future? Oh, if know, they a, can, dude, if they can get that for characters, <laughs> that would be amazing, right? Like don't have to worry about super optimal UVs, this yeah. or that. Um, I don't know how realistic that is short term, you know, long term, I'm sure they'll figure it out, but like short, short term, I don't think so. I think it's really for us, it's going to be more about, um, how much more can we do? Right. Hmm. Like for instance, uh, like cloth simulation, mm -hmm. right. So there are a lot of limitations right now. Like you can't have cloth collide with cloth. No. Yeah. Especially all right. this on the armpit area and all those kind of crap. There's a lot of yeah. application going I, on. I, I think the improvements will be on that kind of technical level, right? It would be, hey, how, how much more dynamic can we make it? And then also hopefully the texture limitations are mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. are freed up so that we can do more. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, uh, but that's kind of tough because I'm not always thinking about the future of what am I going to be doing next. I thought that is smart. Mm-hmm. It's just smart to kind of care. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, huh. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't think of anything that you know. Obviously, that is going to change for us for yeah. characters. But like as as far as like how long you have been working, um, you've seen a lot of change, right? From like the poly limited to texture limitation, and it's been shade limitations, number of shaders and materials. I mean, that yeah, all that's gone up quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah, and in a short period of time, and like. From from a bit, this is within like twenty years. It's it's yeah. It's a big like huge huge shift from what we have been playing when I was a kid. And nowadays, crazy. So, <laughs> um, oh, so now I get a good one. Um, ah, uh, this one is kind of like the same as the one before, but okay. So I'm just gonna combine these two. Uh what type of 3d character do you, do you prefer stylized or do you prefer realistic and which and it's specific on this one which particular character do you that you did that you like especially the best type doesn't have to be only one it could be a group so, you know okay um i definitely like stylized more than i like Mm -hmm. realistic um mm, favorite character uh i might be interpreting it too literally because i really haven't done a lot of full characters you know i've done a lot of skins you know like a lot of different armors and stuff for guild wars and that kind of thing um so maybe I'll just like I'll name a favorite skin, and hmm. you know what? I'm gonna have to pull up my own art station. <laughs> I don't remember what I worked on. <laughs> uh, I can I can pull this up for you. What about the the guy with the cigar? Oh, okay. So the person, like personally, yeah. Yeah, those are pretty. He's pretty awesome. The proprietor. Um, yeah. Um, um, from personal work, I'd probably like that one the most. Um, I think. Or maybe flow. Awesome. Flow. Or flow. The last one, the first one, basically. Yeah. Yeah. For say professional work. Um, how do you think? Do, how do you do the hmm? hair on that one? Oh, I made my a bunch of custom hair hair brushes and Z brush. Oh. So and so a lot of it was like drawing it out, moving the curve around, and then like snake hook, move elastic, that kind of thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So I think for Overwatch, my favorite so far has probably been the Okami Hanzo. Hanzo. Uh, that's uh, it's kind of a love hate relationship with this one because the skin <laughs> took forever. <laughs> oh, the, okay, I see that the one with the wolf. Yeah, so that was um, it took a really long time and it stressed me out <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it looks good though. This was probably the hardest thing I've done for work yeah. ever. <laughs> and um. Who designed this one? Did you also design it for two or? Oh no, that was Arnold. Arnold saying. Oh okay. Yeah. Be cool. Yeah. And what is the the most difficult part when you were working on this one? Is it the? Uh... It was the fur. Um, well, for like the most time-consuming part was the fur because. Mm-hmm. It was really early in the project, mm-hmm. and I wasn't sure exactly how to stylize the fur oh, correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think the the second part was I was still kind of new to like the Overwatch style, mm-hmm. 
So I had a really hard time interpreting the, the shapes. Because, you know, like, when you draw something in 3D, yeah. it doesn't always translate into 3D. Yeah. And I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And plus, you just starting with the new kind of style that you have to match, then I think that's probably going to take yeah. longer than usual. But if you can yeah. do the, the flow, then yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, but the proprietary is probably like, I like that one a lot. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. So when you get stuck, how do you get the, the new inspiration or new ideas? Or when you get stuck or get frustrated or, you know, with, with work or with art? Uh, yeah. Um, so I, for me, when I get stuck, I have to, I have to fall back on, on whatever it is that I enjoy the most, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was oh. probably going to be for me, like figure drawing. That's is that uh, like, yeah. like figure drawing for me is like sort of like meditation. Mm -hmm. um, I can be sort of, I, I don't have to think, I don't have to be so committed to it. And there's like no expectations. It's just like, I'm doing it for myself. Yeah. Um, no one's, I don't really mind. Um, if it's good or not. So that's that's one thing. And then the other thing is uh, kind of like what I was saying earlier of I need to find some part of that project maybe that I know I will succeed in, right? Because um, I need that little win, right? Because like if I'm, I'm frustrated, I don't want to keep hitting myself over the head over yeah, yeah. the hard part that I'm uh, that is messing me up. Yeah. So I, I'll just go through a different part of the model and be like, okay, cool. Like, I've done a million belt buckles. I can do a belt buckle, right? Um, so yeah. And so like when you feel a little bit good about what you just did, then I think you're a little bit more um, ready to tackle like the hard part that you were struggling with. Okay. So you kind of build yourself up with some other things with, that you're good at first, and then you're kind of taking on some other things that you might not be uh, confident in, something like that. Yeah. 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 And actually, if all else fails, and uh, <laughs> does it ever you, happen? No, if all fail. <laughs> well, you, you know, you, you get a team, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think sometimes a lot of artists get self-conscious about asking for yeah. opinions. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's important when you're working on a team to utilize that, right? So ask, you know maybe you just missed out on something and someone else has like, oh, you know what, really, it's just because you're you're too fixated on trying to get that corner. Ah. And if you look good, but if you do this other thing first, then, you know, the rest will be easier. Just take your mind off of it and then come back. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, this one, I think this would be a good question. Um, and I'll, I think this will be the last question. I think we've been going for like an hour. It doesn't seem like that long. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Yeah, it's been like an hour. Um, this is so. How would you say if you like you have your team of the guys? What is the best approach to first make them better? Um, second, how to give them a good feedback? You have your process of like how to make your your team better especially the junior or people that you work with see what i mean how to improve yeah. the overall team what's your opinion? um i think it's really important to actually ask the question of what do you want to work on mm -hmm. because i think with with junior artists they might be too afraid to say what they really want to work on and as long as you had that in mind, then you can sort of assign tasks that build up to that, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to keep giving them the thing that they're going to, that you know that they can do because they don't grow as much, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. You have to um, know what they want to do, know what they like, mm -hmm. and then also be able to push them. Because um, if, if, if they really like something, but they're not quite as good at it, right? You have to find that task that kind of brings it Mm -hmm. um to them i think um for feedback um i i think the the important thing with feedback is not to 
tell everything that needs to be addressed right away. Uh, because I think, because like really, like even now, if I give my work to someone else mm -hmm. to critique, mm -hmm. or, like I get a pretty long list, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And when you get a long list of things, that can be pretty demotiva demotivating. So the, um, so I think that's also a skill for like the, the lead to, to mm -hmm. develop is like, what is the most important thing at that moment? Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, like, so, so identifying, like filtering out all the things that need to be fixed mm -hmm. to what can be done right now. Mm -hmm. So they can, they can achieve that. And then you can go into the other things that's, um, that they need to address. Okay. And so, so you don't like overwhelm them with like, hey, here's like two pages worth of things that are wrong with your, <laughs> <laughs> with your model. First day. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So, okay. And um, is there anything else that you want to kind of um, say for the audience with the younger artists or whoever wants to get into the video game industry? Um, like, you know, the, what do you call it? In the, the, 3D Molly aspired artist or something. Do uh, you have any last comment or how do you like suggestion basically? Oh, um, so maybe this sounds this kind of cheesy, uh, but I think when aspiring artists or like the junior artists. Uh, they'll probably hear from a lot of the different people um, that it's too hard to do something. Mm -hmm. It's too hard, like it's too hard to do concept art. Um, you're never gonna get a job in concept art. Uh, <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. Right? Um, Cause I, I, I think if you work enough at something, you know, you'll get good enough, right? It's just uh, when you hear that kind of uh, advice or that kind of, um, discouragement mm -hmm. you know it you know they might have a point right maybe you're not ready now but that doesn't mean you can't be ready that's true so even when you're not motivated from hearing that um as long as you know kind of like what we were saying before if you already know what you want to do um then you know you have to build that map of how do i get there yeah and and that's not always um, as simple as I'm just going to do a lot of illustrations or I'm just going to do a lot of, you know, modeling and, you know, and I'll get there. Um, just give yourself small goals, achieve those goals, mm -hmm. you know, feel good about yourself and then you can keep going and you'll build mm -hmm. up naturally. Cool. Yeah. Just kind of like do your little like hat instead of character, just kind of build up from part of the yeah. characters and, and eventually go to the whole character. Yeah. And basically don't let someone tell you you can't do something. It's true. Yeah, that's a good advice. Yep. Just, you know, if you just, yeah. And don't avoid real topology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't be like me. Be better than me. <laughs> be like Donald. Yeah. All right. So I guess um, we're going to go and we're going to go edit this video. And um, uh, once we doing the edit, then um, we, I'll let you know um, when it's going to go up onto YouTube. Yeah, I haven't done this YouTube like a year or two, two years probably. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, so you, yeah. you're the first like interview that I that I got this time. So, but I will try to like, usually I'll go like, I, I'll disappear for like two, three years if I'm busy. And then I'll have a row of like six months of things and then disappear again and then come back. But yeah, <laughs> and all right. It's good to see you, Donald. It's been a long fucking time, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's been great talking to you. Yeah. I miss you guys. Get talking to you too. Yeah. So you like is high in there too, or you no? High high uh, moved up to Redwood City. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, is he that riot now? Yeah. Oh, okay. But you're still in the uh, um. What is that? This I forgot. Irvine. Irvine, yeah. Cool. Yeah. But you're not that far from each other, right? So um you know, like a two hour flight, okay. seven hour drive, something like that. Okay. All right. Well, 
good to see you and say hi to everyone that I know. Yeah. <laughs> If you Thanks see so them. much, man. Thank you yeah. so much for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll do this again, probably. Yeah, for sure.